Okay, my name's James and I'm just going to go over some basic things about a two-stroke paramotor engine. These things are very simple, but there are some rules for easy and simple running of them. What we have is a fuel tank, an exhaust, the engine itself, carburetor and a few other ancillaries. This machine has an electric start, which is very convenient. Other machines have a pull start doesn't really make much difference they all run in the same way there are two things you well three things you need for any engine to run fuel a spark and air without those three things nothing's going to happen but if you get them all in the correct quantities it will run lovely the fuel tank should always be very clean inside and somewhere there should be a filter so that no fuel uh, with no dirt gets into the engine. This one is, uh, has got a fuel filter inside it. To get the fuel from here up into the engine, the carburetor is fitted with a fuel pump. This operates from crankcase pressure. So as the piston goes up and down, that pulses and operates a little pump in there. And this pulls fuel through the pipe into the engine through the carburetor but before we can do that we have to do what's called prime the carburetor for this purpose on this engine there is a rubber primer bulb fitted and what we have to do is operate a little toggle on the side of the carburetor to open up the diaphragm which is like a little valve we press that in and we depress the rubber valve gently until we see fuel go up into the carburetor. It is a good idea at this point if you lean the motor slightly away from the cylinder just by a couple of degrees if it's possible to stop any fuel squirting directly into the cylinder. So as soon as you see fuel enter into the carburetor stop. That's all that you need and what should happen is that any fuel which is in there doesn't drain back down because in the rubber bulb is a little valve, just a one-way valve. Fuel, ordinary petrol, is no good in a petrol in a two-stroke engine. It needs to be mixed with a premium quality oil, and it needs to be mixed with with in the correct quantity. This engine uses a mixture of 100 millilitres of oil for every five litres of petrol. Buy your petrol from a good quality uh, supplier, a big busy petrol station and buy the best fuel you can get, ordinary petrol. So you mix it by putting the oil in the petrol, shake it up a little bit and keep it clean. When you fill the petrol tank use a filter so that any grass or any particles of dust or whatever do not go into the system. Cleanliness is everything. The carburetor then will pull up the fuel, mix it with air. This is the air box here. And what will happen is that as you start the engine, that will be drawn in and off, off you go. This engine has an electric start. So we have a little switch on the side to operate the, the starter. Here we have a, a handle for a throttle. And before we start any engine, we make sure that the throttle returns to full rest. This is the kill switch to turn the engine off. This is the button we press to start it. I'm now going to start this engine and then immediately stop it again. Just before we start it, can you just go over how the two-stroke engine works? Right, and how the gearbox works right, and the, the exhaust. Right, the piston is moving up and down and acts as a pump to suck in the fuel from the carburetor in vapour form. That will go up into the top of the cylinder, the spark plug will ignite the mixture and expel it straight away through the exhaust. This happens so many times um, per minute, sort of 10,000 times a minute, 10,000 RPM. Uh, but here we have a reduction gearbox because we don't want the propeller of this machine spinning as fast as that so we, we slow it down. Here we have a, uh, some apertures which show a clutch fitted to this machine 
So when the, when the engine is running slowly, the propeller is not spinning. But as soon as we throttle up, uh, it will begin to turn and uh, we can then go flying. So a two-stroke engine is remarkably simple if you obey certain rules. Correct mixture of oil and petrol, the correct mixture of fuel and air in the carburetor, the correct timing of ignition, which is taken care of by the coil here and the spark plug. And if everything is, uh, is done correctly and everything is nice and clean, it will run. Spark plugs don't last for very long in two-stroke engines, and I recommend they're replaced on a very regular basis because they're cheap, they're plentiful, and they're extremely easy to replace. So, a two and what about um, gearbox? Pardon? Gearbox, gearbox oil. The gearbox oil should be fitted and sealed for life, uh, or maybe checked every two or three years. On this machine, we have to undo all of the screws around it, take off the outer case, peer inside, this is with the engine lying flat on its back and then we can just check that there's sufficient oil in there which is a nice thick gooey sort of an oil. So gearbox we don't have to worry about on this, this is not, not something we have to service regularly. The main thing with a machine like this is keeping it clean. And what's this here? This here is the starter motor which um, we have an electrical circuit, we have batteries down here and we have the, the starter button on the throttle handle. This means that whenever we are in, in charge of the engine with it on our back, we've got the start and the stop within easy reach. So whatever emergency happens, we can start it, we can stop it immediately. The starter motor simply just spins the crankcase and the engine should start immediately. But like any other two-stroke engine, this will not run very nicely when it's cold. All two-stroke engines, all engines for that matter, are designed to operate correctly at a certain temperature. We have aluminium, we have steel, we have all sorts of different types of metals which expand and contract at different rates. <coughs> which means that when we start them up initially, we warm them up gradually, gently, and we allow them, all of the components, to reach operating temperature, at which point the engineers who design them know that all of the tolerances between all the working parts are, have expanded to the correct dimension. Only then should an engine be put to work. So in any aviation, you sit there for a few minutes, you warm your engine thoroughly before you even consider going out flying. You don't go to full throttle at any time until you're ready to take off. And, and even then, an engine like this should be able to get you well off the ground on half throttle, three quarters throttle. And what, um, how long do you warm up for and at what throttle level? You warm up until you're absolutely sure that everything's nice and sweet, it's running correctly, the tick over is lovely and even and I would suggest an absolute minimum of five minutes, possibly just take, take your time, don't be in a hurry to fly, take your time, why would you stress an engine, just leave it uh, to warm up thoroughly so that everything's perfect, five minutes, ten minutes. Of course, then if you fluff your launch, if you go off to have a coffee, if something else happens, if people come and interrupt you for a chat, or if you've got to lay your canopy out, it may well be that your engine has then had time to cool off. So it may well be that although you warmed your engine thoroughly, it may well be quite wise to let it warm up again. Do you warm it on tick over or do you have any throttle? Warming on tick over is not going to do very much at all. So you need um, perhaps a quarter throttle, something like that. Give it some work to do without, without the rev in the guts off it. What you want is to get some heat into it so that everything expands and gets sweet nicely. What you don't want to be doing is going rev, 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 up and down, up and down, up and down. Find a nice sweet spot with the, with the RPM, hold it there, just wait for a couple of minutes. It'll only take perhaps an egg cup full of petrol to, to warm the engine up for five or ten minutes. Mm. It's not going to cost you anything other than a, a couple of minutes while you just gather your thoughts, warm it up, and then it's ready for action. 
Those people who have unreliable engines, breakdowns and constant trouble are often those people who do two things wrong. First of all, they don't pay attention to the mixing of their fuel correctly or use the correct grade of fuel or they don't warm their engines thoroughly before use. They take it out of the car, they bolt it all together, they put it on, they clip into their paraglider and they go rum 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 and then expect to take off. Poor engine, it's not, it's not ready to go. It's a bit like a woman, if you warm her up thoroughly before action the results will be far more satisfactory satisfying for everybody concerned and she'll probably want you to come and service it again sometime in a future date. So cleanliness, using the correct oils, uh, using the correct mixture of 100 millilitres per 5 litres of fuel, filtering your fuel before you put it in there and checking everything that everything's sweet. Changing your spark plug regularly and hopefully your two-stroke engine will give you many, many years of happy service. So let's do the um, uh, just quick pre-startup checks and then a startup. Right, pre-startup checks. Let's assume that we have the propeller fitted. So what we want to do is check the tightness of the bolts. Not gorilla tight. We don't use huge bars. We don't use a torque wrench. We use a reasonably large, uh, long uh, Allen, and we make sure everything's nice and tight tighten up the, the four bolts evenly and then what we do is make sure that nobody is anywhere near and before we go anywhere near the starter button we shout clear prop and we shout that three times clear prop clear prop clear prop we look all around us we look for any debris because if something can be sucked into the propeller that could spoil your day also if it's sucked into the propeller the propeller can then fling it at hugely high speed which if it hits somebody in the eye is going to spoil their day and they'll sue the pants off you so propellers kill propellers maim they're bad news always assume that when you press the starter button the motor is going to uh, have a big problem and go on to full throttle without you even touching that so always assume the worst uh, we we we, uh, we always recommend that on the carburetor you visually check that when you let go of the throttle lever that the actual control on here has not stuck this machine has been fitted with an auxiliary spring to help the return of the throttle this should not be necessary on this particular machine i fitted it with a very smooth teflon lined uh, throttle cable which is a nice smooth action so and that's what can happen to your finger yes and your thumb if yes. you don't assume it's going to start correct first time the throttle cable which was fitted to this machine before had corroded slightly it was slightly frayed and also it was of extremely heavy gauge so it it, it was binding within the outer so i replaced that with the thinner one so we visually check that that is springing back safely so we know that this engine is on tick over only so we shout prop we make sure there are no dogs children or anything around us which could possibly spoil us if our pre-flight check is interrupted for any reason whatsoever we stop and we start again from the beginning so we turn on the switch for the electric starter. We have already primed the engine to make sure there is fuel going up into the carburetor. We are standing holding the machine firmly or making sure it's firmly supported against something solid. And or having it on your back even better. Having it on your back is perfect and because this is an electric start machine it's effortless. You just press the button. There's no excuse not to have it on your back but if you are for instance, if you are uh, servicing the machine or checking it, you could strap it against a tree or a post or something very solid uh, such as that. So what I'm going to do is put that switch on. We've primed it. We've visually checked it. We've visually checked that the throttle is going to go to idle. And we've assumed that the propeller is on. We're still well back. 
clear prop, clear prop, clear prop. Okay, we're ready to start. When I start this engine, it's running lumpy. It is doing what's called four stroking. So in other words, it's not really a regular beat. This is because the carburetor is cold, the engine is cold, nothing is running correctly. As I warm it up, it will run sweeter, it will run quieter, the rattling will stop, and it will run awful lot slower on tick over as well. So the more you warm your engine, the happier it is, and the happier it sounds. Before you do anything else, when you start the engine, the first thing to do is stop it. This is because you need to make absolutely sure before you, do, before you do anything else that the stop switch, the kill switch, is operational. If it is not, you've got a problem. Pull off the spark plug cable, spark plug lead, and do not do anything until you've fixed it, fixed whatever is wrong. Maybe it is an electrical connection, I don't know what, but you always check that your kill switch works before you go anywhere further than that. So, start the engine, stop the engine. Once it's started, you can warm it up by applying a little bit of throttle, giving it some work to do, but never full throttle. Warm it up gradually, warm it up thoroughly, until every working part is, uh, is, is happy. Then you'll have a sweet engine, which is going to give you lots and lots of good service tr without too much trouble. And would it not be better to warm it up before you put the prop on? Yes, I think I probably would. But in the, in the five minutes it takes you to get your propeller out, put it on, check everything, etc. Bearing in mind it's cooling off, so you would then need to warm it through again. So when you have it on your back, when you're ready for flight, just before you go to clip in, warm it again. Don't be in a hurry. Never be in a hurry to fly. Never be in a hurry to, to do what you've come to do. Just take your time, have another think, go through your pre-flight checks, stand back, enjoy the view, uh, just think to yourself, well, the more I warm this engine, the happier flight I'm going to have. And if I want to fly again tomorrow or the next day or next week, I'm going to look after my engine and make sure it's sweet. Thank you very much.